How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. So today I actually wanted to talk about Kerapak. Now this is, what, two days late now? But that's okay. I'm sure you guys will still probably enjoy a little bit anyway. And I just wanted to talk about basically my thoughts on it and the, the actual boss itself, the mechanics, and just, just have a little bit of a discussion about what I think about this boss. I'm sure at this point, most of you guys have had a good shot at it. You've probably been in hard mode as well. You've probably got plenty of kills at some point. And whether you're doing it in a trio, a duo, or even as a solo, I'm sure you've probably had quite a lot of fun. This boss is a hell of a lot of fun. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about this boss and let's see if we can get you guys in the comments as well. Let me know. Is there anything that you specifically love about this boss? Or is there anything that you specifically hate about this boss? I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think. I'm sure there'll be people from both sides. But I've got a feeling one is going to be a little bit more than the other. But anyway, let's get into this. Let's talk about Carapac because there's quite a lot to talk about. Oh yeah, don't forget, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Okay, let's go. Quick heads up, if you want to minimize the video and listen, you absolutely can get back to your game. The background footage is pretty much irrelevant. It's just my very first initial attempts at Carapac that I did on stream. Alright, so Karapak is a solo, duo, and trio boss. I'm sure you guys are aware of this at this point though, and if you're not, then now you are. Initially, I started out in normal mode as a solo, and I just wanted to try it out and to sort of see what the mechanics were like. I was a little bit late to the party, only about 30 minutes, but people had already got kills at this point, and I was quite surprised seeing as I do remember exactly what Rakshi was like, and that took a long time for people to actually start getting kills. I know that like Lucario probably got one pretty damn quick, but on average, people took a little while to get get through that. Now, I didn't realize how easy normal mode was going to be, but I had people messaging me in Discord almost straight away saying, well, that was easy, got a kill first try, and I was like, the boss has been out for five minutes. How have you managed this? So, once I did get on, I had a little bit of pressure, seeing as one, it was on stream, and two, everyone had been saying, I got it first try, it was a piece of cake. So, we went in, we got ready, and when we finally got to the boss... Yeah, it was actually pretty easy. We've, the normal mode is fairly easy. It is full of awesome mechanics, like very interesting mechanics, and I had a hell of a lot of fun with it. We did get all of the mechanics as I wasn't DPSing all that much to begin with because I had to get used to the boss. And honestly, this boss fight is super fun with a lot of interesting mechanics. Now, normal mode is fairly easy, but hard mode is a different story altogether. I continued on to spend probably the next four hours dying to this boss on stream in hard mode. I was being stubborn, I did not want to trio. Most people were getting kills in groups. Apparently it is a lot easier in groups and now that I've done it in a group, I can completely agree that yes, it is a lot easier to do in groups, especially since you can rejoin the fight if you die. So as long as someone's in there, the fight will continue on and you could just rejoin and keep going. However, I was being stubborn and wanted to make sure that I got my solos done and I wanted to just get one solo kill before the end of the day. It didn't happen. It literally did not happen. Which, in all honesty, isn't a bad thing from my point of view. Now, when a new boss comes out, if it takes a lot of time to learn it and get into it and actually get the kills be, and be consistent, to me, that's not a bad thing because these bosses are, for one, meant to last us a month between each other, right? And if this was just a one day thing, you go in, it's all easy, you smash out all the kills, it would probably get boring pretty quick. But. Kerapak is a completely different story. I just yesterday, just last night, managed to get solo kills down and I can now solo Kerapak in hard mode. It does take still like 9 to 10 minutes to get a kill, which is absolutely fine to me. I am not fussed about speed killing it just yet. I'm just happy that I can even get through and just get the kills done. But like I said, learning a boss for that much time is absolutely fine as long as the boss isn't boring. It felt like I was throwing myself up against a brick wall at some times as I was dying to the same stuff and it was stuff that I'd already figured out how to deal with. But because it was new, I was dying to it over and over again and that kind of got frustrating a little bit. But it didn't sort of make me not want to do the boss because I knew that the rest of the fight was still a hell of a lot of fun. When I say that JX has done a great job with this boss, they have done a, an absolutely great job with this boss. I have just spent probably about 10 minutes in my own head just thinking about something that I can complain about. And there's literally only one thing. Now, that one thing is just the, the way the arena is, is sort of set up. I don't know if it's just the way that RuneScape works with its tiles, but sometimes it'll feel like you're clicking somewhere. And because that's such a big arena, you'll click 
and your character won't walk in a straight line it will walk like on a freaking angle and when you're trying to surge through those uh, the little lightning things that come forward sometimes you'll go on an angle sometimes you'll go the complete wrong way sometimes you'll go you'll think you're going straight through it and then you'll fly off to the side and you'll get hit by it but that's something that you get used to eventually and it is something that i've figured out how to deal with now so it's not that big of a deal but at first that made learning the lightning phase pretty damn difficult but after a while, it gets a little bit easier to deal with them on phase one and two. And on phase three, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I just throw on barricade because there's just way too many opportunities for me to screw that up. And in all honesty, I probably just will. So I'll just barricade that one as you can just spam barricade pretty much. And that makes life a hell of a lot easier for me. The next thing that I wanted to mention was the time warp button. It is such a smart idea. I've been saying for a while now that with God Wars 3, I would love to see new mechanics that we've never seen in game before. And this is literally a perfect example of it. And it's a perfect example for Jagex to prove that they are not running out of ideas, that they have plenty of stuff probably up their sleeves. Like seeing this in this boss, makes me excited as hell for the next one because if they've thought of this for this one this is the first boss they can't make the next one be absolutely terrible they just can't do that it can't be like the first one is so good everyone gets excited for the second one and that's a full-on flop because it, it just it's just not going to be good if that happens and it won't i have no doubt in my mind that the next boss is going to be super interesting super unique and i'm hoping to hell that they have something like completely brand new just like this as well the time warp is basically it will take a like snapshot in time i think it says of where you are and it'll copy your uh, cooldowns it'll copy your adrenaline and basically you can press that use barricade and then after 10 seconds you'll actually go back to that spot and you can use barricade again but it's not only just that that's like the easiest way to explain how it works you can use the time warp throw down the sunshine throw out as many abilities as you can your asphyxiate your wild magic or whatever style you're using and then as soon as you go back in time you can use those abilities again you can quite easily literally use sunshine wild magic asphyxiate with limitless and then as soon as you go back you'll have 100 percent adrenaline again you can use wild magic and asphyxiate straight away again you can get so much damage in with this it is absolutely crazy and there's a lot to learn with it however Phase four. Phase freaking four. This is literally my bane of existence until last night. I could not do this whatsoever. It did not make sense. I didn't understand how people managed it. I didn't understand where the adrenaline came from. I don't. I just. It just blew my mind. Now, this was in solo when I really couldn't do it. I tried it in a trio. I managed to die and come back and die and come back. And it just let me practice how to actually do it in phase four. So for anyone who's struggling with this, I would suggest going in a group and just getting in there. And that way you can rejoin and keep practicing that phase four. As if you die in a solo, right as soon as you get to phase four, you've got to redo the whole fight again before you can get back to it. But you have to rotate defensives. It is so good. I love the fact that there's a boss fight now where you have to be using your defensives or else you are absolutely screwed. Like, if, if you don't use them, you are dead. You have to jump between clones, killing off his clones. And once you've done that, he's going to get enraged each and every time one of the clones dies. But while this is happening, you are getting absolutely smashed by Karapak and his clones as well. And you do need to be using defensive abilities to keep yourself alive. Now, you can use things like a devotion, but you have to use the time warp to be able to use it twice. Or else you're just going to run out of defensives as you do need to double them up. Things like double barricade, double devotion, even double immortality. And then using things like reflect and debilitate in between as well. It took a lot of time to learn this and I still screw up sometimes, but I'm getting more consistent. Even though the cooldowns are taking a while, I am getting more consistent with it. And either way, like I said, it is such a fun boss to go through. Personally, I would love to see more bosses in the future that are like this, where there is a normal mode that is fairly easy for people to get into. So people who aren't into super end game bosses just yet, people who have not the best gear in the game yet, can still get into this boss and make a good amount of money. And then also the hard mode for the higher end players that want to get into something quite a bit more difficult it's literally two birds with one stone every time there's a boss released people are like is it low level is it high level is it going to be for me is it going to be for other people am i going to be bored of it in after 20 minutes because it's a really easy boss rex matriarchs or is it going to be something that's going to take me a long as hell time to get into whereas most people won't be able to do it but maybe some of the like high level players the really high level players can get in and do it straight away now this was like the thing with thing with rapture right everybody expected it to be like a mid-level boss with how j gates were talking it turned out to be super difficult and they had to nerf it. But the way they've done this is it's gone completely against that. Is it for low levels? Is it for high levels? It's for everybody. This is actually really damn good and I'm really impressed. The Carapac normal mode, I would probably compare to the difficulty of God Wars 2 bosses with a little bit more flashy mechanics, more stuff you can do. But 
it's not any more difficult than those if you get hit by them it's not punishing you can deal with that just eat some food and move out of the way you're probably not going to die in normal mode that much as if you know how to use defensives at all and by that i mean like standard like anticipate freedom uh, and maybe resonance and devotion that's pretty much it but in hard mode it is super difficult and if you you get punished pretty quick for screwing up some stuff as of now i'm still using a yak at this boss and i still go through quite a lot of food at the end but each and every time i do it i do end up using slightly less food so maybe one day we'll come off of the yak and we will use a ripper demon as well that'll make life a bit easier once we can do that but for now i am happy just getting my kills i am super happy with the boss and so far we have not had any drops but guys that staff i don't know if you've seen the video yet but i put up a video yesterday i'll put a link in the description of where i tested out the staff because it was lent to me by somebody else and honestly I don't want anything else in the game right now. All I want is to get a staff of my own for that. I am going to be working hard, saving up. I want one of those staffs. They are so damn good. They are so fun to use, and I want one. So that's going to be me for the next couple of weeks, probably. Other than double XP, but once I actually do have big plans for double XP, so we will be doing that. And you guys probably will find out a little bit more stuff in the near future. I have quite a lot of new things starting up soon, so hopefully you guys get excited for that. And if you are, then let me know in the comments down below because I've said a few times that. There's something that i'm hiding and there's something that i'm ready to show you guys soon and i think today or tomorrow maybe the day so getting ready for double xp there's gonna be something big coming and i hope you guys enjoy it when it does come get in the comments and try and have a guess about what it could be i am um, i'm quite interested to see whether any of you guys are caught on or not i don't think you have but we'll have to see but anyway that's going to be it for the end of the video overall Carapac is an amazing boss what do you guys think are you enjoying it do you hate it do you love it let me know if you enjoyed the video do leave a like on it do subscribe to the channel if you are new thank you all to my channel members i really appreciate the extra support you guys continuously give it is absolutely amazing your names are on screen now anyone else who wants to support the channel while also getting some perks there is a the join button by the sub button give that a click you can have a look on what perks you can get and of course it is always really appreciated anyway guys thank you all so so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will see you all in the next one see you later guys bye